I was at um, the Shanghai Expo about a, a month ago, uh, together with a group of Hong Kong's leading uh, professionals, architects, engineers, and, and, and whatnot. And after uh, visiting a Expo, uh, we were shown a project in Shanghai. And this is the Hongqiao uh, Commercial Hub uh, project. Uh, it's a combination of uh, railroad uh, terminal, airport terminal, and commercial uh, development. Let me just give you uh, a, a quick um, introduction to what this uh, project, this transport hub project in Shanghai around the Hongqiao airport uh, is made up of. Firstly, you have the old uh, Hongqiao airport terminal. Then you have the new Hongqiao airport terminal, which uh, has been built as a glass building, back to back, is a railway, railroad terminal which is being built that will provide uh, maglev service taking passengers from the Hongqiao airport to the new Pudong airport of Shanghai. And then you have the high-speed railway station attached to this airport. And trains are now running between Hongqiao railway station in Shanghai and Nanjing and Hangzhou cities. And the Nanjing service uh, was uh, started about two weeks ago, uh, high speed, 350 kilometers an hour. It takes about an hour to get to Hangzhou from Shanghai. So that's what's happening uh, in Shanghai. Not far from uh, Hong Kong, probably about uh, an hour away from where we are in Shenzhen. Uh, the city has been running uh, high-speed rail surface to Guangzhou, and it, it takes, again, about an hour. And the uh, Chinese describe this uh, kind, this mode of uh, rail transport in three short sentences. Xiaopianzhu, uh, meaning uh, the trains are shorter, you don't, you don't uh, have as many carriages behind the engine as uh, other trains. And it provides commuter service, gongjiaohua. So they treat intercity train service like commuter service, because trains leave the platforms every six minutes between two cities. And the, uh, the last uh, sentence in this uh, short description of the kind of service that they are providing is Gao Mi Du, high frequency, high frequency train services. So shorter uh, trains uh, leave, the tra leave the station every six minutes and it's commuter traffic, a commuter way of, uh, of carrying people from one city to another. And therefore this leads to a very new, uh, it's not even a concept, it's a phenomenon a new phenomenon of cities merging physically. There's a huge process of conurbation, the merging of cities. And it's not just a physical conurbation. In terms of administration and apart from, uh, for example, the uh, combination or annexation of cities into, into one for administrative purposes, you have things such as in the telecommunica telecommunication arena, Cities that used to have different city codes now share the same city code, and you pay local charge rather than a long distance charge. Now, while the physical location of a piece of land or building cannot be changed, not physically, not in terms of its coordinates on a, on a map, but the access and therefore the accessibility of any piece of land or any city where your piece of land is situated can be changed by way of investing in infrastructure, making the flow of uh, human resources and goods much easier, faster, and cheaper. So I think that's what we are seeing <coughs> in the mainland of China. Then people are now building, I mean, they're not talking about it, they're actually building it. Um, <coughs> these railway projects, uh, for example, high-speed rail connection from Beijing to um, Shanghai and from Shanghai to other cities uh, in, in, in the country. So rather exciting uh, a scene and all these, I know public transportation or transportation is not the only factor that determines the quality of life 
uh, in any country or city, but these are the things that are uh, in the pipeline. Uh, my presentation is about Kitech. We have a vision for a dis distinguished, vibrant, attractive, and people-oriented Kitech by the Victoria Harbour. In fact, this piece of land, 320 hectares of land, vacant land, is the largest piece of land in the centre of the city and by the Victoria Harbour. It's at the centre of Victoria Harbour. And we have several goals with this precious piece of land. We would like to build a heritage, green, sports and tourism hub of Hong Kong. It appears greedy, right? But we believe we can do it. And we would like to provide green web for sustainable development. In fact, it is one of the key elements that is very visible in the Expo, I see. There are lots of worked examples of sustainability. And now in Kitech, we continue with this goal. And of course, we would like to provide quality living environment in Kitech. Currently, we have two projects on site, under construction. And the first one is the cruise terminal. We have a cruise terminal for the biggest vessel to come to Hong Kong in 2013. And to the north of it, we'll have a 24-hectare metro park. It will be a park for not only for people of Kai Tech, it will be for the whole territory. And actually, it also serves as a very big park for people coming by cruise, the visitors. To its north, we are going to build a multi-purpose stadium Perhaps if we go ahead with the Asian Games, this will be the key venue for the Asian Games. But in any case, we are going to build this for people of Hong Kong, not only for sports, but also for entertainment events. And to the northeast, we are also building the public rental housing. There will be 13,000 flats for about 40,000 people living here. And for the whole Kai Tech, we have the land use plan fixed in 2007. But now, we don't stop here. We, we are still pursuing with better urban design with a goal of sustainability. And we are looking at providing pedestrian-friendly environment. We like to celebrate different views and we build a grid for prevailing winds. And also, we are going to build green web. So all those major open spaces are interconnected. They are not standing alone. They are linked together. Among the 320 hectares of land in Kai Tech, there will be about 100 hectares designated as open space, as greenery space. It will require all the buildings, no matter it's private building or public building, to provide about 30% greening on site. And for the first time in Hong Kong, we'll be providing district cooling system here, taking advantage of its waterfront advantage, using water from the sea to cool down the heat, to exchange with the heat from the air conditioning. It will save a lot of energy and will save a lot of wastage by reducing the surplus from individual buildings. In terms of transport and traffic flow, apart from the pedestrian linkages, we have to provide public transport, and the backbone of it will be through mass transit. And there will be very few through road within Kitech. That means not encouraging vehicles going into Kitech. And uh, also like Shanghai, we respect heritage. So thank you. Um, so first of all, when we look at a uh, conservation project, uh, what we think of usually is we want to respect the past. We want to rejuvenate the neighborhood. And most importantly, if we, if we do those two things well, the community and the people will embrace it. Uh, and that's very important to us because 
for projects to be sustainable, you need the community and the people to be, uh, to be behind it. So whilst um, a lot of the activities that our fund or our company have done recently has been in China and in Hong Kong, um, some of the most interesting uh, conservation projects we have done is actually in the US, uh, especially in downtown Los Angeles. Um, and when we started, we, we actually bought up some of the uh, really nice historical buildings and we conserved them. Uh, for example, like this building uh, with a beautiful marble, build, marble lobby. Uh, another building in our portfolio, like the uh, Bradbury building, actually is very well known uh, for, if some of you are movie buffs, you may recognize this as the uh, background for some uh, famous movies like uh, Harrison Ford was in this uh, with the Blade Runner. Some of the buildings we bought up, this one is an old uh, um, abandoned, dilapidated hotel. This is how it looked like when we, when we, when we took over. We gutted everything, uh, re retrofitted it, um, and now it is in, on the top part, these are luxury residential apartments. Some are condominiums for sale and some are residential apartments. But when we did that, something interesting happened. The people who bought these places or rented these places uh, typically came from the local art scene, the local entertainment, entertainment scene, and the creative industries. So suddenly, there is a community, uh, an interesting mix of stylish, artistic community. A community has been built, which to us is a little bit chaotic, but it's interesting, it's organic, uh, it's, it's uh, authentic, but most important thing is alive. And because it is alive, it becomes sustainable. It, it's something that it became, it can grow on itself. And that's uh, the philosophy that, that we have when we look at conservation project. We try to bring life into the project so that it can be sustained uh, to the future. And also changes and adds to the neighborhood. On to something that, some, some of the things that we've done in um, China. This is quite recent. Uh, we bought a, um, this is actually one of uh, the smallest projects that we've done in China, but we found it very interesting. Um, it's a kind of dilapidated great C office building in the center part of Beijing. Uh, very near, it's on um, the Walker Stadium West Road, where is the bar and restaurant district of Beijing today, like the Lan Kui Fong of Hong Kong, similar to that. Uh, when we saw the location, we felt that this would be a good place to do a boutique hotel. Um, and at first, the, at first, the plan is to tear down this ugly thing and rebuild it, redevelop it. But we found that with the, uh, with the current uh, setback rules, if we do that, we would have to set back the building and also build a much thinner building. Uh, that, if we do that, we feel that we will lose the intimate neighborhood feel of this and also lose the curb appeal of the uh, wide frontage. So instead, we completely uh, uh, gutted the hotel and retrofitted to something like this. Now, it's hardly recognizable, but uh, that's something we did tore down a facade, tore down everything inside, became this. And inside, um, it's, it became a very, uh, I guess, stylish, glam type of uh, uh, boutique hotel. Um, and um, we, won, we won over the uh, community uh, with um, actually multiple uh, international awards uh, in the hotel industry. And then the last project I'm, I'm going to uh, touch on is uh, also in Shanghai, in the Wangbu district. Um, this is a historical building built in the 1930s. Uh, on the pedestrian street in Nanjing East Road. So what we did was, is a classic uh, conservation project, clean up the facade, um, conserved uh, uh, or rebuilt it to um, the original state of the uh, Art Deco look. But inside, uh, when we took over, it was like this, and it was completely transformed to something like this. Um, and uh, the atrium was like this. Um, again, uh, it's, it's completely transformed. But most importantly, there is now life. Uh, these are recent events that we have done. Uh, again, it is lively. People, this place used to be completely empty. Now, people on the streets are flooding into this. Just, again, just uh, a few examples of what we have done. Nothing grandiose like the, uh, like the city building, but uh, it's something that we feel passionate about and we love the heritage and uh, we want to bring authentic things uh, to cities. Thank you. <laughs>